Hey guys, today let's model a cathedral, and not just any cathedral, but one that actually makes sense. It's easy to get carried away and just model something's impressive but doesn't have much thought behind it. This time, we're working with a plan. Since I'm planning to sell the final model on cgtrader.com, where it might end up being used in games or other projects, I need to make sure that everything adds up from the proportions to the modular design. So, let's dive in and see how to model a cathedral the right way. When starting a project like this, the first step is always research. I looked into different cathedral styles focusing on Gothic architecture because of its dramatic arches, intricate details, and towering spires. Gothic structures have a lot of character, but they also require careful planning to get the proportions right. Every arch, column, and flying buttress needs to work together structurally and visually. That's why I approach this with a modular mindset, breaking the design into reusable pieces. Modularity is a game changer for 3D modeling, especially when creating assets for games or animations. By designing the model as a collection of separate reusable parts, like columns, windows, and decorative elements, I can ensure that each piece fits perfectly while keeping the workflow efficient. This also means I can easily repurpose these pieces for other projects in the future, like castles or medieval-themed environments. As the time-lapse unfolds, you'll see me start with the basic layout of the cathedral. I used Blender's snapping tools and proportional editing to quickly block out the main structure. This step is all about getting the overall proportions right, making sure the design feels balanced and believable. From there, I moved on to the more intricate details, the pointed arches, ornate carvings, and stained glass windows that give Gothic architecture its iconic look. These details might seem overwhelming at first, but using Blender's array modifier and symmetry tools made the process a lot more manageable. One thing I always keep in mind when modeling is the final purpose of the asset. Since this model is intended for sale, I made sure to keep the geometry clean and efficient. That means no unnecessary vertices or overlapping faces, which is especially important for game assets. I also paid close attention to the UV layout, ensuring the model is ready for texturing. A good UV map can save you hours of frustration later, especially if you're working with detailed textures like stone or stained glass. For me, the process of modeling is incredibly therapeutic. There's something calming about putting on some music, zoning out, like, and letting the design come to life piece by piece. It's like solving a puzzle, and the satisfaction of seeing everything come together is unmatched. Sometimes I'll start modeling just for fun, with no specific goal in mind, but this project had a clear purpose from the start, to create something functional, beautiful, and versatile enough to be used in real-world projects. Once the modeling was complete, I started thinking about where this cathedral might end up. Platforms like cgtrader.com make it easy to share and sell your work, and I love the idea of someone using this model in a game or a virtual scene. I might also share it with my Patreon supporters, along with some of the modular pieces as exclusive content. It's always exciting to see how other artists use these assets in ways I never imagined.
As the time lapse wraps up, I hope you enjoyed seeing how this cathedral came together, step by step. If you're new to Blender, I highly recommend experimenting with modular modeling. It's a great way to improve your workflow and create assets that are, are versatile and efficient. And if you're interested in using this cathedral in your own project, check out the links in the description to grab it for yourself. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Blender content. I've got plenty of exciting projects lined up, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.